that time. Finally packing up and putting, that's not, wait, this isn't a vlog. Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. A few weeks ago, took some cuttings from one of my favorite crotons, the Freckles Croton, which I'll show you here in a bit, out in the garage, nice big bushy plant. I decided I needed more of those plants. Took some cuttings, threw them in some water. I've had it over here in this window and then had to do the Christmas thing in the window. So moved it to the top of the fridge because it's nice and warm up there. That helps promote some nice roots. It has been about five weeks since I did that. Got a lot of good stuff going on down there. Lots of roots. I'm going to give this a rinse and go out in the growth space, get them potted up and talk about propagating some crotons. The pros and cons of doing it with water. Spoiler alert, not my favorite way to propagate a croton, but very effective. That's enough of that. We may as well go outside. It's time to move these into a pot. Hey, pumpkin. Hey, you doing, bite? You got some, she's got somewhere to go. There it is. The Freckles, AKA Mr. Freckles, my favorite croton. Doesn't have the big bold leaves of just your regular Codium variegatum, but it's such an incredibly sturdy plant. I've had this one for years. Every winter, well, every winter as of last year, so this will be the second winter, I've been chopping it in half to get, to get more and more bushy and full. It just has been easy going. I've only had to repot it one time. I've only ever seen a couple mealybugs on this thing, and I've been dealing with mealybugs for a long time. There were a few spider mites on it last year, but that cleared up no problem. It's sturdy plant. Hasn't been susceptible to a lot of issues that most of my other house plants are very susceptible to. Grows well, it's low fuss. Doesn't need to be watered all that often. Doesn't need a lot of light. It gets the most color with a lot of light. It gets by in medium light. During late summer, when the sun starts to shift and things aren't as bright outside, so trees start to block things when the sun goes lower in the sky, it still does great. Just an overall, Wonderful plant, talk about it all the time, at least when I'm doing my garden tours and things during the summer. Don't know why it's not more popular. This is a plant that should be propagated and produced and sold to everyone because it is so freaking sturdy. If you love crotons, but struggle with them indoors, try and get your hands on a freckles. Not the easiest to find. I would like to have more of them, hence how we got here. And look at that growth form too. It's just a nice looking plant. Mine's leaning, it's got a little wonk to it. So when I repot this one in the spring or early summer, I need to make sure to adjust for that so that it's not leaning like it is. It's cause it got top heavy. Don't let him get, this isn't a video about how to care for your freckles. This is how to make more freckles. I suppose there was a point to that though, is that the freckles isn't, at least mine isn't the most full when it comes to croton, so having a few of them in a pot is probably a good idea. Those are looking pretty good. There's some algae on them. That's a good reason to use containers that aren't clear. There are ways around that, and there are things you can do about the algae. It's not really going to hurt them. It's not stringy or anything like that, just a slight pigmentation, so that's okay. A little bit of algae is not a big deal. You can always spray this down with some peroxide if you're noticing lots of gunk and builds up. Usually a good idea to give these a rinse and get them nice and clean. I generally like to make sure that I have at least six inches of stem to work with, and then I clean off the bulk of whatever is going to be underwater. I usually trim off some leaves with the crotons. With the freckles, I just stuck them into the water. It was a busy time of year, so I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna make some snips, throw them into the pitcher, and let them do their thing, because it's a tough one, and I know that it's one that can handle it. Gonna change the water out about once a week. It's been a couple weeks since I did it this time, but I just kept going, well, it's time to pot it up so I don't need to, and then didn't have time to get it potted up until now, so it just sat there. A little bit of gunk built up, but that's okay. Like I said, this is a sturdy plant. I have a lot of different sizes going on here. There's a good amount of roots on these, considering I didn't prune the foliage back very much. I really just cleaned up whatever was going to be submerged under water and just left it alone. Water props can be really easy. It's one of the reasons I do like them is you can just put them into some water, just make sure you change it out and the water gets cleaned. I said it had been a couple weeks because I just, I forgot. Put a bag over it, hold in some humidity, depending on the type of plant with the croton, I thought it would be a good idea because the air in my house is very dry. Let's say I had a few inches of roots on them, get them moved over into some soil. That's where things do get more complicated though. With this being a pretty sturdy plant, I think I've driven that point home enough, right? that the freckles is one that's not likely to throw any kind of a fit, I wouldn't think. Sometimes moving a plant from water into soil can have some complications to it just because of the drastic change in environment. A few weeks from getting them moved over is probably going to be the most critical. Oh, we've got a whole entire knot going on down here. That's gonna be fun to untangle. 
probably should have been doing that over the weeks, just pulling them up and separating them. Uh-oh. Look how good these roots are looking on them. Went ahead and got those separated because I didn't want them all potted up into the same container. I'm just going to be bumping these into a six inch pot. Well-drained potting media that is very, very airy. That's the well-drained part. The whole point there is that these have never experienced like a grittiness or lots and lots of oxygen even, right? Because they're just cutting. So it's important to make sure that they're going into something that's going to have a good amount of airflow and all that grittiness to it. Slightly overfilled this. I'm going to have to use my finger to gently press those roots down as far as I can in there so that they're distributed throughout the container as much as possible. You don't want them knotting up, right? They're gonna get tangled together if you leave them in that little ball. Wanna get them spread out. This is just your basic potting up a plant, right? Nothing too complicated about it. It's more about the aftercare, what to do at this point that is the most important, which is basically not allowing it to dry out. Shouldn't say sopping wet either because it will rot, but making sure that this blend that it's in stays evenly moist at all times and nice and humid. Out here in the growth space, it's typically between like 60 and 75% humidity. That of course fluctuates. Doors, what I would do with this, and actually I may even do this out here, is to just take the plastic bag, just like with the pitcher that I had them in to get them rooted, and just put that over the top. Can rubber band it right around there. If you need to keep it nice and tight with a Ziploc, you can just pinch it in, and that will usually hold in enough moisture to keep it going. Of course, wanna water it in first, right? That's very important. After about three to four weeks, somewhere in there, instead of having this pinched down around the base of the pot, I would basically just lift it up. So it's just kind of sitting up there so some air can get in there. And the plant will start to learn what airflow is like <laughs> better in the conditions it may experience when it comes to drying out, because that is gonna be part of its future. Just getting it slowly acclimated to airflow and humidity fluctuations is the main thing. With the croton, with the freckles croton specifically, I'm not all that concerned about that. I'll probably, since I have the bag right here, go ahead and throw it over one of these with the others. I'm not likely to bother. I'm just gonna pot them up and see how they do. I think they should be fine. One of the easier plants to grow from cuttings, you just get a four to six inch cutting, clean off some of the foliage, put it in some water, ideally with the bag over the top if you have really dry air in your home or wherever you're keeping it. Once those roots are a few inches long, pull it out, throw it into some soil, keep the soil consistently moist, bag the top to help hold in some humidity for a few weeks, and then it should be good to go. This isn't a plant where I need to worry about root stimulators, anything like that. Most plants, I don't worry about root stimulators. They're not usually necessary unless it's something that's very difficult to propagate. Luckily, that's not generally ever the case with a croton. So yeah, that's all. I just figured I should talk about it since I did it and it wasn't in any of my vlogs, which is where I usually have projects going on and I'm going to have more crotons showing up so you can document the process of where the rest of my freckles came from. Cause I can't, nobody ever sells them. I don't understand why it's a great plant, but they don't. So I'm just going to make more of my own. When these have rooted out into these containers, so say by hopefully May, June, June at the latest, I will be potting them up three to a container in a 10 inch pot. One stem here, one stem here, another stem here in a 10 inch container. Because as I mentioned, the freckles, it's not the most full, at least not when it gets up to an older age. Really have to prune on them to keep them nice and bushy or they can start to look leggy. They respond well to pruning, so that's not a big deal to have to do that, but I would just prefer that the other one be similar to the ones that I have with multiple stems coming out of the containers. Need to get the rest of these potted up and then come springtime, hopefully be combining them into an even larger pot. And I will be doing the rest of those off camera later because I have to rummage around and find some pots <laughs> to put the rest of them in. The nice thing about doing these, just propagating them in soil, is that you don't have to worry about the transition from water into the soil. Transition shouldn't be an issue. That being said though, they also root really, really well in the soil. So yeah, water propagation, it's an option. It can be done. It's kind of fun to do if you wanna watch those roots grow, but I feel like it's adding an extra step because they generally root very, very well and quickly into a nice potting mix. So not really necessary. It was just a method that worked best for what I was doing at the time, which was making room for plants in here and organizing and 
you know, I was talking November, right? Things were pretty busy. I was traveling and things like that. So it just made sense to me to just prune it, throw some into some water and wait for them to root out and then pot them up. Because in the water, I know that all I have to do is make sure that the certain level of water stays maintained inside of whatever I'm rooting them in. Whereas with these, if you forget to water them when you're trying to get them rooted, then that could be the end of things for you. You really have to stay on top of it. So this is just the safest and easiest method. Once I get these over here potted up, I'm probably gonna take some more cuttings and do this all over again, because I would like to have two more large containers of that freckles croton, and this will give me one more large container. By the end of summer, it's January 2nd, 2024 right now. By the end of summer, the cluster that will be in a 10 inch container should have filled that out, and they should be probably 18 to 20 inches high. It's a pretty vigorous croton once you get it going, and then when they reach their mature size, they just stay there. They don't do much. That's why it's good to prune them. They can branch out and get more and more lush. That's, yeah, that's everything. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below and say hi. Love talking to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great new year or just whenever you're watching this video. Great life. Things are good. Hope we good. Oh, and I did water this in. I didn't film it, but that is very well watered. It's going to stay that way. Cannot let it dry out at all from this point and on. Not until I start to see probably two to three new leaves push out of there. And then I can say, okay, well, I could probably let the top inch or so of soil dry between waterings. But until then, until I see some movement from the plant, not going to happen. Got to get it rooted before I start doing the fully normal house plant stuff with it. Like letting the top few inches of soil dry out and all that stuff. Thought I should point that out. Should have mentioned it earlier. I just forgot, but hey, better late than never. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.